How would you feel if you were given a chance to buy non-tournament legal reserve list cards, proxy versions, but not as expensive as 30th anniversary was? How about 10 dual lands for 100 bucks? Because Wizards of the Coast has put an article out that seems to suggest there's the potential for secret layers to start getting reserve list cards. In today's video, we're going to unpack that possibility, look at the pros and cons, and where Wizards went wrong before, where they could auto-correct, allowing players to have the chance to get these cards and play with them in a casual fashion. This is something we really need to talk about, because it looks like Wizards of the Coast is going to climb this mountain again to test the resolve and the pocketbook of players. Wizards of the Coast is still eyeing the reserve list like a fox in the hen house. It wants to find a way to get at it and make some money. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here and thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel. Now, before we get started in today's video, thanks again everyone who's been watching the videos and subscribing to the channel. Guys, we're down to 2,377 subscribers to get to 20,000 and of course, the 20,000 subscriber party is going to be epic. So thanks again to everyone who's taking time to hit the subscribe button, turn your notification bells on for my daily uploaded content and of course, thumbs up on the videos and joining the comments section, guys. It's great to have these conversations and see and view player opinions, ideas, and thoughts. You guys have taught me a lot. It's epic to have you all here. So the reserve list, 572 cards, mostly unplayable, fun stuff from back in the day that don't really have a lot of relevance nowadays, but still are a lot of fun. I love the reserve list and I am a reserve list collector. I own many of these cards from my younger years. I own Power 9 set. I've got a lot of old stuff because I never got rid of it from opening the packs back in the day. But I also have had to invest and buy these cards. I've had to pay top dollar. Some of you guys saw that I got the beat up Mishra's workshop. So now that I'm in this, how do I feel about them being reprinted? How do I think I should feel? Should I be angry? Upset? It's not what you think. There was a time when I thought these were purely things that you know you could build up value on and you still can wizards of the coast just has to take a different fashion with this i want to share with you first the article fun right it looks a little bit like one of those play test cards from mystery booster or those special cards from gavin verhey's events at magic con but it was created in a brand new way we call them play test cards because they look like we used to well play test cards before making them a real thing only this one which again is super cool is the first one of these things that you might see in a wild that actually represents an actual real pre-existing card. So it's super cool. It may be also be confusing because playtest cards are not really tournament legal. Counterspell in most cases very much is. In this case, however, this particular counterspell, much like the playtest cards that look like it, is not tournament legal. Play it against your friends, keep it in a binder, tape it to a mirror for your morning motivation. You do you. You just can't. Okay, so you can't use it in tournaments. You guys get where I'm going with this. A very interesting article. Now, of course, you want to see the card. So let me just slam this card up for you. And oh, oh, I'm on the wrong side here. So here you have the counter spell. See, they got some writing, some gibberish on it, counter target spell. It's like the original artwork, a little bit funky and played with. But there you have it, okay? A play test card. Now, for most people, you think, well, how does this how does this relate to the reserve list? This is just counter spell. What matters? This is nothing. This is a t this is a test. This is market research being applied. This article, the Reddit posts, some players for, some players against. The idea of what they're trying to do is find a way to get people on board with the idea of reprinting the reserve list. Now, how they failed when they did this last time was the price point. They realized probably in retrospect that the price point was too high. Yes, some whales out there bought it. And the price right now is being kept inflated by those whales. The average players are not going to go out and spend that kind of cash when you can buy the real card for less than that in some cases. So the price point of 30th anniversary is overall a fail. It met negative remarks almost across the board. I personally hated it because of the price point. When I look at myself as a player of, of old magic cards, and I like the idea of playing against people. My playgroup is really small. We've gotten older. We've aged. 
and new players have never had the chance to play with these. So the original idea of 30th anniversary, I thought was going to be put it in a box, sell it at a store, do drafts, sell them for like 10 bucks a pack and have a great time celebrating 30th anniversary. And they failed. Wizards of the Coast failed miserably. I've never been so angry, so upset. And it's not the idea they couldn't reprint them. I have no objection to the reserve list being reprinted as long as they don't use the original cards or the original artwork. I want different artwork here on out. I want different type of card thing. I want, I want them to always look different. I do not want them to be the original art. I think that's how you preserve the original value of the cards from the reserve list without having such negative anger from the player base. So the idea that these could appear in a secret layer, like the idea you could get all 10 dual lands in the secret layer and, and pay what, 59, 69, 100 bucks, understand this is market research right now. They are trying to judge player reactions to see how you react at home, how we react as content creators, what the general consensus is before they move forward. They could still print a whole bunch of these that aren't reserve lists yet, just older cards personal incarnation and stuff, and they could throw those as playtest cards into packs, maybe in, I don't know, mystery boosters, okay? But the idea is, how do we monetize old cards like the reserve list as non-tournament legal, at least that's what they're going to try right now, get it out to players and make cash. That's what they want to do. I understand that motivation, and I have no problem if it's different artwork, a different look to it, not the original, to give those players a chance to play with me to join what I've always enjoyed. What's wrong with giving everyone a chance to get in there like they should have done with 30th anniversary? But my problem is I still think they are gonna try to ram it down your throat and capitalize. If it was 10 dual lands for a hundred bucks, one of each, for a hundred bucks in a secret lair, I don't think many people would quibble. 10 bucks, you'd probably all dive right in. Even if they looked kind of funky like this, most people I think would buy it. hundred bucks, sure. 10 dual lands, maybe the power, power nine, another hundred bucks, whatever it may be. But Wizards isn't going to go that route. They are still testing the financial fortitude of players. If they put out some minor reserve list cards, like Sildevi Excavations, they may only charge $49.99, give you five cards, something like that. See who would bite. They would slowly move up to the reserve list, higher end power cards, Mishra's Workshop, Tabernacle, Pendril Veil, vale. Thanos' Coffin. Right? Whatever, whatever. Candelabra of Thomas. Crazy stuff. Black Lotus. But the prices will increase as they get closer to printing the big bad boys. The bad boys accommodate themselves coming back. You can't be fooled by the market right now thinking they're all going to be the same price because they're not. Wizards understands the secondary market. They know what the price point is and they want to get cash. It's just up to us to see if we buy it or not. How the player reactions will be. The idea I could play with some of you playing a vintage game of magic, old school magic, and have you have those cards, which, I mean, take again, take a look at it. It's still counterspell. It's got some funky writing. If they did it like this, I wouldn't have a problem if you had a Savannah with the original artwork, let's say, dual land, but with this funky writing and stuff on it, that's different than the original. Don't reprint the original and, and upset the ire, you know, don't upset the apple cart, whatever it may be. That's the old term, right? But at the same time, I'd let you play with that and I would have fun playing with you. And I think a lot of people would too. Because the idea of celebrating magic as a game, and it is a game, being able to enjoy it and still have people who have bought collection cards like myself, you know, keeping that value aside is a good thing. It builds the base, but allows newer players to experience it and possibly lead to whole new inventions of uh, reserveless masters. I've always touted that now for years. I want to see that kind of stuff. And that's a possibility if they keep doing it this way. That's what we're talking about. Bringing back the original joy of the game at a cost that we can afford and that Wizards of the Coast will accept. Not just that we'll accept it, but Wizards will accept it as the cap mark for how much they can charge and monetize on the reserve list. They want maximum, they want maximized monetization of anything they print on the reserve list. They want to bring in the cash because they see it floating around. But what they probably are also looking at now is the downfall price of a lot of the reserve list cards. They've really sunk in value 
after the 30th anniversary. They realized we did some damage there. We got to correct that. So going forward, hopefully they've learned some of these lessons. And I hope they don't charge $300 for the 10 reserve list cards of, of the dual lands. I hope they don't charge 500 bucks or $1,000 for the Power 9 cards or 500 bucks for, I don't know, let's just say 500 bucks for like Chaos Orb, uh, Library of Alexandria, and Mishra's Workshop, right? I don't want to see 500 bucks for those three cards. That's ridiculous. They will be non-tournament legal cards you can play with casually. So treat them as such. I really hope Wizards does it, and I really hope they don't overcharge. I don't mind them making money. That's great. A lot of players feel more comfortable with the idea of getting official cards from Wizards, even if they're still a form of proxy. It's official from Wizards. It was created by them. And you just have a better feel than just creating homemade proxies or shipping them off from, from some other country and have them delivered to you. Some people prefer it this way. So if you do it that way and you build it, they will come as long as you don't try to just lambast them with price increases over this stuff. They have an avenue. It's narrow. It's small. They're trying to find the mountain pass to capitalize on it. I hope they find the right path. I hope they get there so everyone can enjoy the game at a price point where they make money, but we get to have the cards at a reasonable price. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. We got to have this conversation because it looks like this could be coming. This is just a little test. It's a poke to see how people are feeling right now. This was probably always on their agenda and they intended on in, you know, doing it going forward, but they're not sure if now's the right time. So they're taking a test of the waters. I'm sure you guys will let them know. Looking forward to reading those comments in the comments section. Hope you guys are having an awesome day and thanks again for allowing me to entertain you here on the channel. Can't wait to see the new subscribers join and get closer to the 20K party when we hit that 20,000 subscribers. And remember, the rules for the 20K party do come out at 19,000 subs to give everyone a little bit of time to prepare for the party. All right, guys, have a great day. Talk to you soon. And of course, a big shout out and thank you to the fantastic people I got on this channel. My patrons, my YouTube membership members, you guys are epic. Thanks again for supporting the channel each and every day, guys. It's amazing to have a group of people like you supporting the channel. Have an awesome day, everyone. See you soon. If they do it, and they do it at a reasonable price, it's gonna go over very well. I'm telling you guys, they could have a whole massive line of success with this. Wait, where are we? Ramble Jamble section. I'm like, what am I talking about? I just started talking without telling you where we were. Welcome to the Marvel credit scene. But that's what we're talking about, guys, the idea. The idea is not flawed. The idea was flawed because of the price point. If they had made the 30th anniversary 10 bucks a pack, it'd be a smash success. Now, Secret Layers, getting certain sections of reserve list cards, the idea of doing it that way, and piecemealing the money out. They're still gonna make lots of money. They're just doing it in sections. They'll still get their pound of flesh, remember that. It's just if they do it at a reasonable price. Charging 500 bucks there, 500 bucks there, people will choose to indulge in these as they are desired. So if I want the dual ends, I'll buy, you know, let's just say it was 10 bucks each. So you buy all 10, it's 100 bucks, you buy a place set of four, that's $400. But you may have 20 or 30,000 people buying $400 packs, right? Four of each, four of each, four of each, four of each. Crazy stuff could happen. I'm waiting to see how it all plays out. It takes a long time for Wizards to do this kind of stuff. They're just testing the market research right now. Be prepared for that. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Bring a friend to magic. Chill out and have a good time. And bring me my nachos and cheese. You don't need to bring it to me. I'm a grown adult. I'll go make my own.